Hi, thanks for staying with us. Um, so, I mean, we're discussing issues around the, what's it called, youth involvement, right? So, referencing an article by Akinji Fed Daniel, technology is key in the development of virtually all nations of the world. It has a historical record of bringing advances that have led to healthier, wealthier, and more productive lives and is a key ingredient to solutions to the most serious poverty, um, alleviation, and economic development challenges that we currently face and are likely to face in the future. So young people are oftentimes regarded as tech natives who need, amongst no, um, need no, no assistance when it comes to navigating technological tools. So we can therefore say that um, we're leveraging technology um, leveraging technology as young people, how would this help, you know, in terms of giving better leadership, better governance, right? That's the question or the conversation for tonight. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so the reason we had to play that video <laughs> was because... I mean, that's the wave of the moment right now. A lot of people are doing the Mr. Yakubu challenge, right? And this particular song is coming off of the back of the just concluded 2023 general elections, right? Um, young people are very creative. They're very talented. They have a lot of, you know, gifts and talents that they can always use, you know, to um, pass a message. So when I watched this video, even though it's speaking to the, and I put it in quote, the anomalies that happened during the election, it just got me thinking. Truly, we have, we can do a lot more than Fela did. Fela sang about governance, he was singing about all of those things, right? But nothing really changed because he was just stating the problem. But now imagine us truly now taking everything that we have at our Beck and call. So imagine files creating a video on your local government chairman on these, the things to look out for, you know, leveraging technology to just drive better governance. You know, so it, that, that got me thinking. And, you know, that was why, you know, the topic came to be. What would it look like if, you th if the youth truly engaged the capacity that they have, you know, mix it with technology to drive better governance? Because we've seen that. Our fight or whatever has failed at the level of PVC, it has failed at the level of whatever. So why don't we just say, you know what, anybody that has either elected or selected themselves there, let us just make sure that they're doing the job and use this same technology to drive that. Is it possible? Yes, huh. it is. Um, I've, been, I've been part of a lot of things that um, have helped um, drive technology in politics and governance in Nigeria. From the first year election being ratified by political parties, by any political party, by INEC in 2016, it was conducted, you know, under you know participation by me and a few others, then as a national publicity secretary. Um, I must critically say, you cannot engage what you don't understand. So yeah, the files video looks good, it's great, but here are some few things I need to point out. Um, if you've read the Electoral Act. Before you get to, you know, the issues with IREV that we're complaining about, there were other anomalies that were broken down a lot earlier. So one of them is within the Electoral Act. I can't remember the exact subsection right now. I think 772, I can't, I'm not sure. But um, it clearly states that all political parties, before Congress and Convention, must produce a soft copy and a hard copy of all the membership of its parties, of the party. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not completed by any of the 18 political parties. That's already an anomaly, meaning that all congresses and conventions which were held, or primaries, were flawed, were flawed which means whoever emerged from it did not react. This is regardless of parties, so whether you support Labour and NPP, uh, PDP, So APC, all parties failed they at that all, level. They all failed. So, you see, you can't start ignoring A, B, C, then get to Z That's and start thing. shouting. Hmm. That's what the problem is. Um, I think um, Section 95.2 of the Electoral Act clearly states that, um, though yet to be interpreted by the Supreme Court, but it clearly states that no state apparatus can be involved in supporting 
or dis dis degrading any candidate. State apparatus refers to appointed executive and paraphernalia of elected officials. Mm -hmm. So a governor can't support anybody he wants to, but commissioners can't. We don't see those situations in Nigeria. You have, oh. you have even, what is shocking, a, a campaign spokesman who is a sitting minister. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. I, I, that's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. It's totally you should wrong. have resigned so, if you yes, to take on that yes. position. And as a son, it mm. comes a little embarrassing. Mm. And we start to question what the body of benchers has a position on this. Because, yes, the interpretation is not a minister cannot. You know, in Nigeria, we virtually want to write in the constitution, the president needs to brush his teeth yes. before we understand yes, the president understand, needs to brush yes. his teeth. And it, it doesn't do that. So there are a lot of things. The youth are critical because... Of course, the largest voting population, they put a lot into everything. But, like I said, you can't engage what you don't understand. So there are things you need to be part of. Yeah, everybody will want to say, ah, I got my PVC. No, in politics, PVC is not the first move. If you go to countries like America, yeah, that, that's already UK, too late. It's too late. At the point of PVC, it's already too if you, late. If you go yeah. to America, UK, China, you know, other um, participating, participatory you know, elective systems, what you're going to find out is that you have more people in political parties than people that vote. Hmm. And this is because you affect the kind of people that emerge. Once they emerge and five are good, you don't need to bother yourself who exactly wins. Who have, so and may the best man may win. Be yeah. that, beautiful. Hmm. But um, we don't want to be part of politics. We we'll say one party is bad. I don't believe any party is bad. What happens is that some parties have bad players. Some have more bad players than the others. Let's be honest. And this is being critical. Nigerians were okay, behind a particular party I don't want to name. And they were so drunk about the political party. But let's look at the, the system within political parties. The entire hierarchy is made up of people that were in those other parties that they say they don't want to be a part of. So what are you talking about? Mm. It is not parties that are bad. It's players within the parties that are bad. And, and for me, the youth miss this. And I blame a lot of things on as much as we say technology has been good, it also has been bad. So Nigeria is at a point where, I travel a lot, it's at a point where I feel that, you know, we've come to a point where ethnicity didn't really matter. I, I'm, a lot, I'm a lot mixed and I move around quite a lot. But the same technology that, that can be used for good, so technology is a double-edged sword, that can be used for good, actually was used to cause me. And the amount of ethnicity and tribalism brought into this politics and religion brought into this a brand was of driven politics. with technology. It was driven with technology, mm. making it closest to and the, Nigeria has never been this close mm. to 1965 preceding the civil war mm. until this election. Okay, so I mean, this is interesting. I would like to hear um, Isis' thoughts and I'd like to hear NJ's thoughts on this because Misha. When I saw the video of uh, Mr. Yakubu, <laughs> when I saw that video, I thought, mm, imagine if we start to wake up to the reality. I mean, you are the one that's always driven it into our heads. I think when we met you, we became a lot more politically literate. Thank you for increasing my political <laughs> awareness. I would not, I, I was a complete dummy. I can, I, can, I, can, I can announce myself on TV. I was a complete dummy when it comes to political issues. And thank you for your friendship and continuous guidance because it has really helped to open my eyes. You know how you used to shout, you and Uti will shout about PVC is not the answer. We didn't see it mm -hmm. until 2023 happened. All of us, our eye can't clear, you know. But you see, yeah. now we are seeing them releasing videos, releasing skits and all of those things, right? I am just thinking, can we find a way to channel that energy, you know, towards, um, and I'd like to hear your thoughts, Isi, towards creating some form of consciousness. Because it's one thing for politics to happen. There is a governance part that nobody's paying attention to. You now sleep again, oh, and now wake up four years after again, say you want to go and elect somebody. But there was governance for four years. Nobody paid attention. And we're having problems there. Isi, let me hear your thoughts. Well, this is a, a topic that is very close to my heart because we have, we have disregarded the principles of, of governance. And the principles of governance uh, varies. There is fairness, there is transparency, there is responsibility, and there is one more thing I, I can't remember. I think participatory, basically. 
So we have, like Kunle stated earlier, we have not participated fully in terms of what is expected of us to actually get what we are supposed to get from our government or whoever is governing us. And for us to achieve all of this, we have to take the concept of um, the principles of governance into heart. And we have not, we've not looked at where we're going to as a people and as a youth, as the youth of Nigeria, basically. Why am I saying this? We send out a narrative based on the media. We send out a narrative, whether it's on social media, whether it's on the internet or in whatever capacity, basically, whether it's local, we send out whatever message or narrative we want to send out to the populace to listen to us or to get an information on. Now, this same narrative is also sold to us by the, the, the government. How do we counter this? Okay, that's my, my, my take. How do we counter this? We can counter this by creating, you know, the digital uh, governance doesn't, when we have digital governance, it does, the internet doesn't forget. We can always go back and record everything that has been stated by the, gov the government or whoever is governing us. We can go back and talk to them about this and give them facts and figures. And remind them what... of all their promises. <laughs> yes, and remind them of their promises. These are the things that we can actually do because the internet doesn't forget. So, so we can actually we can actually uh, hold them accountable. That's what I'm hearing you say. Hold, yes, we can hold them accountable based on what they have done and said in the past. Mm. And we can use the media to do that. Mm. Absolutely. Let me come to you, um, uh, <laughs> NJ. <laughs> It's actually interesting. Is he is he don't turn to monitoring spirit? <laughs> Make we begin to check all that. Uh, what do you call them? All the campaign promises and everything. Just note all the it's, time stamps, everything. Yeah. And once it's time, start giving them the dossier. Oga, you said you are going to give us free education. Oh yeah, where is and it? Because we easily we yes. easily do Counter that it. on a daily. Yeah, we do that when no one is asking us to do that on mm. social media. Someone posts something. You see, within a couple of hours, someone goes like years ago and brings it and then has time to go and do an edit and put it side by side and then have a comment and everything. So that is one way we can actually do it. You know, um, during this whole election um, and campaign season, a lot of people have said a lot of things, a lot of, you know, campaign promises here and there. And, you know, as time goes on, you know, some of these statements are going to start to change and we'll see it also in the media and at that point in time is where never promised you something and is at that point in time that technology can be leveraged to actually hold these people accountable and say okay at, when you were campaigning you promised us this you promised us that mm -hmm. and this is you and then you play a video saying this is you actually doing this mm. so eventually you can be held accountable and i feel like another way that we can hold or leverage on technology is actually not being as youths, not being the incubators of fake news. So also on social media, a lot of during the campaign season, a lot of um, you know news was out there, and you couldn't even tell which one was real, which one was fake. You know, it took there was no way of no authenticating. Sanction, no, no, no sanctions. There was no, no sanctions. There was no way of authenticating the yeah. news and the information that you were being loaded with, and we were loaded with. Bombarded, a lot yeah. of information. So it took a lot for people to see which one was real, which one was fake. And as Nigerians, we like to share. So we just went off, you know, spreading and, you know, escalating this news without even verifying if it was actually authentic. Mm -hmm. So that is one way we can actually curb because... The use, there is, a, there is a guideline and a principle for even the use of social media and other media, you know, um, platforms. platforms. There, is a, there, is, there is a guideline, things do's and don'ts. So even when we have, when we get information, how we do spread those information actually puts a question on our character because it is wrong for you to be a perpetrator of news that you're not even sure of. You can 
and it's very easy. In group, there are lots of group chats that were formed also during that period, and a lot of information was carried out, you know, and this whole, you know, religious and tribal issues affected the country in different ways, got to the point where even, you know, you have a staff or somebody who is working, who has been working with you, and for the first time, you were looking at them very differently. You were looking at yeah. them like, okay, so if, I, if something happens tomorrow, are you going to actually, irrespective of how good I've been to you, are you going to turn against me? So we got to the point, the country got to the point where we were thinking about that of our next, door, our next neighbor. And for me, that just means that we lack a lot of love within the country and we lack a lot of self, you know, self-love and love for others. Mm. So I know we say that, that Nigerians are happy people, but, you know, this election period actually brought a lot of things that we had bottled up inside, brought it up to the surface, and these are issues that we actually have to deal with if Absolutely. we are to move forward. Absolutely. I mean, speaking about doctored um, videos, I mean, I don't know if anyone had recently listened to the audio tape that was allegedly leaked for Oedipo, and uh, Peter Obi, that's the one that is the latest one. Oh, really? Uh, well, <laughs> that's the latest one that, uh, you know, that's been, you know, in the news for a while now, where they mentioned um, how he was talking about certain things and all of that. I, I, I mean, so, you know what? Um, the power that the youth possess, I don't think they understand it yet. But you know what? Let's go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, I'll, I'll come to you, Kunle, because there is a power that is, that is really good, that it can actually turn out for our own good. Mm -hmm. But we just need to channel it right. But we'll take a break. When we come back, I'd also like to open our phone lines um, to hear your thoughts. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so, I mean, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, but we have a gentleman in our midst. <laughs> His name is Kune Lawal, and we're discussing governance, and we're asking how can they use leverage technology, right, and what's their responsibility, you know, in leveraging technology to drive good governance. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, so um, clearly I was saying that the youth don't understand the power that they possess. And this is why I say so. Monopoly had happened with mainstream media. The only people that could get eyeballs following and all of that were the NTAs, the AITs, the whatever, TVCs, the Plus TV, you know. But you see, what social media has done, a, macar a macaroni would release a video. Like in less than 20 minutes, you already have 50,000 views. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's that powerful. So now imagine if we now say, because again, we get very, we, we quickly go, we hibernate so quickly. We are angry, we are agitated, we are pushing and everything. The next thing, all the drama happens, we go back to sleep. So imagine if we understood this power and we start to really, you know, become Channeling. very deliberate about governance. You were the one that taught us that our local government chairman does not have immunity. I can actually sue him to court for not doing some, some work. Do you understand? Imagine if we understood that. So how can we, that knowledge, how can we begin to like, like feed a lot of young people the power that they possess? We're starting something in partnership with uh, Enough is Enough. Yeah. You know, want to do more of those kinds of things so that you just be using your social media platform. It's just like some of these telcos. You know that sometimes if you just tweet, they will answer you quicker. Some banks, they don't want to see their, their name on Twitter because once you tweet and you tag them, they will, they will, Immediately. Quickly, they will quickly respond to you. So, so that, that's power. So how do we leverage on that? I, I'll go back to, to what I said first. You can't engage what you don't understand. I know. But now, here's the point. So I'll give an example in Nigeria. Dr. Doct uh, doctored or undoctored phone call. Everybody's arguing this call is doctored. You know, there was one about Atiku preceding three days before yeah. the election, which they were talking SPV or whatever, which made news. The first thing you need to know is against the constitution and the laws protecting Nigerians to record, to any, record phone call. any phone call. Yes. Even the government does not have that power. If you address that first, you'll be solving a bigger problem. 
So you see, we have left what actually is law mm. and are following the emotional aspect of things, which is Nigeria's biggest problem. Now to the fact that, okay, we can leverage this, we can use this, we can know this. I'll tell you something, and I'll give you two situations. The Electoral College in Nigeria has done a lot of work in politics and governance. But I'll tell you one of the things that happened. We launched one of our cohorts the same day news broke that Yule Doche, no offense, has a, I don't know, new wife, or then or side chick, then now wife, and you get. Naturally, the Electoral College, give or take, has never fallen below 150 sign-ups in a day. Mm. We fell below 40. Wow. The question is what exactly is important to Nigerians, and I don't blame them. We've lost meritocracy in this country. This is a country that will give 70 million to someone who went to Big Brother. Didn't win, went to Big Brother. Give a person a position with government, and they say, well, what do you want somebody to come out with a 5.0 GPA and collect one million Naira check? Hmm. It doesn't mean that they will, they will, which they will not even pay them, which they will not even pay them eventually. They will have yeah. to remind the government. It's just possibly. the pictures for follow-up. So, so it's the mm -hmm. message we are sending. Lopsided. Mm -hmm. So Nigerians now, I, I really don't blame the next generation. They're saying, okay, we want them to adapt, to be close to governance. We want them to be cool with governance. We're not... As much as we try to teach them, as much as enough is enough, Electoral College Nigeria, CGID, uh, Yaga are doing massive work. None of us sleep. I, it doesn't seem enough because the truth is they've been bought over by something and told that this doesn't matter. And the only reason they are told this doesn't matter is so that the, action, the, the actors that act can perpetrate what they need to perpetrate. Mm -hmm. First, under the Constitution of Nigeria, and I'm in Lagos, I need to tell you this. This is not about no man's land or anything or that nonsense everybody has to say. Any Nigerian can run for an office anywhere in Nigeria as guaranteed by the Constitution. It is, it is not a probability, it is law. Any Nigerian can live anywhere, any Nigerian mm -hmm. can run anywhere. Come on, I'm an example, I ran for, my name is Kunle, I ran for Senate in FCT, what are you talking about? I'm an example of that. So let's not, let's not say, ah, uh, this is one, I hate the word activist, but let's use it for this conversation. Ah, see this activist on ways. He's saying uh, anybody can run anywhere. I've lived it. If I haven't done it, yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. But would you be able to run in Lagos? Why would what to stop me? I'm just not interested in Lagos. You have no drainages. Back to what I was saying. No offense. <laughs> but back to what I was saying. But <laughs> um, it's important that... <laughs> It's important that, you know, you get to understand how the system really works. It's important that you are keyed into understanding what exactly goes on. I was very disappointed. Governor Omahi, of, I think, was stating that he, he moved parties. And, you know, it was on Channels TV, and they asked him clearly, why did, you move part, uh, why did you move parties? Did you enjoy the manifesto? He said, I'm a new member. I've not read the manifesto. God damn. Hmm. On that note, hold on. Sorry, they said I did not open phone line. Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 070-250-07749. That's the number to call. Remember to turn off the volume of your television set, please, or whatever it is that you're watching us for. Please go ahead. So, goddamn, how do, how do you do that in a democracy? If you do that in any other country, <laughs> you'll be shot of shot. And it's cool here. You don't need to read the Constitution. I can tell you, 97%, and this is me saying it on national TV, 97% of the people in parties have not read their party constitution. Well, if you don't mind me asking you this, I know this is something that we need to talk about, but, you know, you are the, you know, political expert here. So uh -huh. I want to get your take on this. I want to get your take on this. And this has to do with selective governance. I was going to talk about it, but I think you will be in a better position to talk about it. So what do you think about the situation we have currently in Nigeria? Do you think that there is selective governance where we have, when we need to actually get the job done, in quotes, the DSS knows how to get the job done, seek the people out, know the corrupt office um, individuals, and get them to answer to the law. But when it comes to a certain set of individuals, they do not go the extra mile. So do you think we have selective governance in Nigeria, basically? We don't have selective governance. What we've done is that um, we've actually um, truncated our constitution, and here, here is how it goes. 
Now, in any country in the world, um, police is under justice because uh, the job of justice is to, of course, provide um, um, interpretation and enforcement of laws. But now you have the police under interior, which is under the executive, which is thereby subventing the powers of the, the attorney general is elected by the president in Nigeria. In other civilized countries, you have the body of benchers nominating somebody endorsed by the president and the National Assembly. So do you, the, the initial problems are, are, you know, are things we haven't even decided to talk about. And as long as police remains under the executive's control, it, uh, the, uh, how are you going to have justice, please? So you had supreme judges being arrested. Like, otherwise, we have to have selective governance. You wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it selective because all of us are guilty of it. Um, you see, ah. if you owed, if you owed me a hundred and fifty thousand naira now, if I, if I had a cousin that is a policeman, man, you're in trouble. <laughs> so please do not I'll, say I'll it's be only be. politicians. We're all guilty of it. It's yeah. not a, no. it's something that's, it's something that we're all guilty of. But why is it allowed to happen? Mm. Because we generally that's are. That's why selective governance. That's my Why point. Why is it allowed to happen? There should be rules and there well, should be well, a way of. Well, for me, Nigerians are on. Uh, how would I put it? The best way to explain this is to use an analogy. Nigerians are at a buffet of corruption. We just wait for whose turn it is to eat our father. So as long as uh, somebody is in power, you tolerate the nonsense going on because you know one day my uncle or what I'm sitting opposite be can become minister and then I would <laughs> be able to, you know, uh, abuse the, the, the privileges of office. So that we, we just wait for that. That means that we as, uh, we the youth of Nigeria, we are prob probably not responsible enough to actually um, participate in politics. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a question of responsibility. And I don't term myself youth. I'm actually going to be 45 end of this year, so I don't term myself youth. Yes, I can announce my age. Um, yeah. But I, don't I, think it's, I think it's, I think, I think it's a responsibility. It's, a, it's an issue of character, which is lacking. Um, you can, if you track youth in, Niger youth in Nigeria or people who are considered youth in Nigeria, which is anybody below 55, which is the wrong age, but anybody below 55, one year they're saying this about Buhari, next year they're saying this about Tinubu, next minute they're saying this about Peter Obi. The lack of consistency mm -hmm. or lack of dedication to laws and... No, Nigerians are not judged, they're not directed by laws or governance. They're being directed by emotional perspectives. The person that I'm supporting is my tribe. The person I'm supporting is my religion or the person is in my political party. Apart from that, ask a Nigerian to give a qualitative reason why. We don't even know what party is is capitalist in Nigeria. We don't know which one is socialist. And you know, we don't, if you ask, I can tell, I can call hierarchy of uh, national party hierarchy. And these people do not know whether their parties actually represent a socialist perspective or a capitalist perspective. And that's how bad it is. So what do you expect from the citizens? So where, where I think I hear you like circling around is ignorance, highly yes. ignorant, um, I, think it, I think ignorance is a good word. We have to find a word worse than worse ignorance. than ignorance, right? I can mm -hmm. I, I I can imagine. So how do we even begin to correct this, right? Um, because again, um, a, a good majority of young people spend their time online, on social media, some of these apps, and all of that, doing the challenge, doing the whatever challenge, and all of that. How do we? begin to speak their language because again for you to be able to reach them you must be able to first of all transmit your information through the medium that they are residing in so how do we start to i i, I think I, that? I think we've reached a point in nigeria where we're beginning to spoon feed people and expect them to be spoon fed hmm. i'm one of those that doesn't align to the fact that we have to translate so i remember when we said um PVCs are not important, and the Electoral College put it out that won't be, we will support the PVC drive, but we're not going to be a flag bearer of it. And we're talking about political parties. Everybody said, Kunde, the Electoral College, they've gone crazy. When the emergence happened in the, after the primaries, everybody was like, okay, Kunde got it. 
So I think I rather set the precedence for what should be, and then allow people to make their judgments. I don't need to tell you water is hot. Sometimes you have to allow the baby put his finger into the water, and then when it burns him. So I believe Nigeria should first suffer from what is, and this is not that I want people to suffer, but it seems that's the only language we understand. Because let's look at it this way. The electoral college will say we are giving you free classes, nine weeks. We're going to give you a certificate. We're going to train you. We're going to do this. People are not ready to attend it. But tell them we're going to, uh, you can pay 25K to, oh, to, sit, music down, cost, cost to sit down with portable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they the will. Full. Yes. Please help me. I can't, I can't help. I can't help you help yeah. yourself. Trust mm. me, I can understand that. Yeah, true. And and I, I've taken that position. It might seem harsh, most people say, but I think people need to understand a few things. So let's get our fingers burnt first. Go I ahead, think, uh, That will send a better message. Oh, um, so this is uh, we have more youth with PVC in the north than in the south. They came out and voted for that choice. He won the election. The radio is the media in the north. Over 40 million people listen to the radio. I agree with the radio part. Yeah. But I'm still in, I'm in total disagreement with the voting patterns. The highest voting, part, uh, voting block is the youth, which is over close to about 46, 47%. If you put it to up to, if you put the age up to 45 you're going to have 70% of Nigeria's voting population. So, and I think that is more predominant in the South. So you can't say, so the key is not who has a PVC. I think what the person is trying to say and cannot put properly is that those in the North will use their PVCs. Those in Lagos, ah, there's Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. there's Ghana to go to during elections. You know Lagos, they like the soft life, which is why they don't have drainages. And Lekki is like a pet aquarium. No, will you stop saying you don't have an issue? Ah! Wow. Only. Yeah, wow. Like Lekki is like a what? A pet aquarium. Wow. So, I'm only, I hope you are hearing. So, that in case you want to look for who to find or who to, who to, who to send your bill to, his name is Kule Lawal. He's the, what do they call of the Electoral College? <laughs> the founder CEO. <laughs> ah, but you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a bit of a downer for me, what yeah. you said. But it's the bitter truth that we must all swallow. Um, mm. Young people, truly, they want to be spoon-fed. Everybody just wants, you know, and all of that. But I still believe in guidance, right? If we have to handhold people, we can. Because, Kule, the kind of education you received growing up. It's not the type of education that is happening now. Yeah. A lot of things have been so watered down. So that, that toughness or that, um, what's it called? Um, foundation. That, no, 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 that, that expanded mindset mm -hmm. that you think that That's they should true. have, young people should have. They can't have it. They're very, a lot of people are very shallow. They're just, they just very, the basics. There's no, let's not no, do too no. much. What, what? So that's what I'm saying to you, that how to, because again, when you destroy the educational sector, you understand? That capacity for them to think and reason. You know, you and I say, come, let's sit down and reason days. together. In no day again. It, it, it so how do we solve the problem? Because you, you must really handhold people. You can't just say, okay, I beg, if they cannot use their brain, they want to go and sit down or listen to portable or uh, do and do Malian, whatever, then let them go. You can't because they, they were not given better choices. So they don't even know how to make be better choices for themselves. Let me... Before Kunle comes in, can I, can I just say one thing? Just a brief one. My take on this is that the younger generation today, or those of us that are in the younger generation, that tends to be the younger generation, what we have is we have a narrative that has been given to us that we have imbibed. And that narrative is not... It's not feasible, it's, it's watered down. And that watered down concept is not serious. So wherever we look for what is easier to achieve than looking for what is difficult to achieve. That's why you that's why you're talking about the fact that we do not think, we do not, you know, have that tenacity or that drive to go the extra mile to achieve what we are supposed to achieve. What's 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 shocking now here is that 
Okay, the Electoral College in its three years of existence has trained over 10,000, and that's virtually. Mm -hmm. We've done, adding um, physically, we've done over 15,000. And what I've seen is that when you provide people the necessary information needed to achieve something, what I've seen is that we've seen people drive and become local government chairman. We've seen people drive and become president of the Medical Association of Students. We've seen, we have this, we've seen people drive. One of our students was a deputy gubernatorial candidate. Mm -hmm. We've seen people drive. We've seen them being able to dream. So I don't think the problem is they're not able to think. It's just they've chosen something to become a norm. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, Etiosa, which is which is local government, yeah, I won't talk about their local government electrician, but I'll, uh, no offense, but I'll talk about what matters. Now, Etiosa, everybody on Friday knows Etiosa is the hottest place in Nigeria entirely. It's, mm -hmm. In short, Etiosa could be called the Las Vegas of Nigeria. Sure. Yeah. Now, the money that is mostly spent on Friday night is being spent by the youth population. Do you know that if you take the amount that is being spent on clubs, in a month in Etiosa is enough to deliver a governor into office. Hmm. A month? Yeah. I don't need to go a year. A year can yeah. deliver a president. Hmm. I guarantee that. If you put down the... I didn't say all clubs in Lagos. I narrowed down to just Etiosa. Etiosa. Hmm. That is how misplaced we are. I told somebody and I said, do you know that to deliver a councillor in Etiosa, the money you will spend on one Friday night will give you a council and a local government chairman. But we don't think that way. Nigerians have been taught to think, like I said, it's a selfish perspective. Um, as long as I get what I want or I, I go where I'm able to go, everybody else can drink Gary. In short, I think this generation is more drunk at trying to show the next man I am better than you. Mm -hmm. And that is their undoing. And that is also provided a little bit by the technology. Narrative. Yeah, because they, they, I mean, it's been For said the gram that, now. It, yes, yeah. Instagram is the biggest um, platform of envy. So it's almost like, let me go and check what NJ is doing. Ah, she just bought a new car, or oh, yeah, missus. And that's what has even also um, escalated this BBL. The whatever that's, that's the cars, you know, uh, everything, like, like, the like, fraud. Like what? The issue. What? I'm the head of ECN. Who I just bought iPhone 14. I, mean, I have to join now. Yes, I have to get it. Yeah. Wow. It's a bit mm. of a downer, but we are going to survive. I, I, I think that consciousness. I still would not agree with you that it's a place of selfishness. You understand? Mm. If it's because you don't understand how important governance it is to you. That's why you will not pay attention to the issues around governance and politics. Do you know why I feel they understand Majority. what's important, how important governance is to them? If you check the average timeline, people complain about light, they complain about dustbins, they talk, complain yeah. about taxation. It's massive. Check the average timeline. Everybody in the morning has one thing to nag about about Nigeria. Now, <clears throat> It's also misguided because of their illiteracy that the first person they seem to think of is the president. Mm. That totally has nothing to do with you. Mm. So they tell you so now, they, they don't understand. Uh, it's president, president, president. And Does governor. Mean, now your local government champ. They don't even address governors. I've been to states where you have people saying, the governors tell them, ah, is Abuja holding your money? Mm. I can tell you clearly here. Uh, what do not people not say these days in this election time? Okay, I learned something in this election time. Go and verify. Uh -huh. There is no governor that if he does not receive his FAC allocation by first of the next month, he will be in Abuja. Mm. The president doesn't want to be seeing them. Trust me. <laughs> he releases their money every 26th. Mm. And that's what happened. But governors will lie to their people and say Abuja is owing their money. The states have private jets. Mm. Uh, if I remember 1999, governors used to drive themselves. Mm. What went wrong? Ha! Huh. That's it. That's Cost the other thing. Governance is really increased. On that so note, we are finished. Mm. See, you see why, ladies' night, we should not be bringing Kule Lawa. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> but thank you so much, Kule. This has, has been. See, every time I sit with you to discuss issues around this Nigeria problem, I, they learn something every day. Thank we you. keep on learning. We'll keep mm -hmm. on learning. I believe there's hope. We, we can make things change. Thank, Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Isi, and thank you.
NJ. Before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wish Your Africa. You can interact with us further. More importantly, follow all the engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. It is a duty of youth to war against indiscipline and corruption because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Even though some will argue with you that the tomorrow doesn't seem to ever come. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another... Our own tomorrow will come at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>